Today, we are talking about Avatar HD, and in this video, we're going to do a deep dive into the power and thermal characteristics of their VTXs. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the current draw on both the standard VTX and the new One S Whoop VTX, and we're going to get it under my thermal camera and take a look at how it actually behaves. And hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll have not only a better idea of how to power these and what battery you might need, but also the thermal characteristics with regards to cooling as well. Now, just before I get into it, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. I would not have been able to make this video without their support. With the support of my Patreons, I've been able to buy not only the Avatar HD system, but the P2 Pro thermal camera that we're going to be using in this video today. And I just want to say a massive thank you from me. Anyway, let's get on with the video. Let's take a look at the power consumption on the standard VTX first of all, and then we'll move over to the thermals. Okay, so just to demonstrate first of all what the power usage is on the Avatar VTX. What we're going to do now is just power the unit up. We'll then allow it to connect to the goggles. You can see the current draw being shown over here as we speak. Currently, this is set to 4S voltage or 16 point. Eight. That way it'll give us a good indication of what the drawer on the module is at that point. Right, it's now connected on the screen, so I'm just going to go in and make sure that we're on full RF power, which we are, and that standby mode is turned off, which it is. And as you can see there, we're getting about 400 milliamp of current draw. Now there is something else we're going to want to do, and that is make sure that it is set up to record on board as well. So if I just do that and then hit the record option, that way we are now recording on the ear unit as well. And you can see that the current draw is increased to about 450 milliamp in the recording mode. Next, I just want to demonstrate the thermal characteristics of the Avatar standard VTX. What we're going to do is take a look at it under my thermal camera. This is the Infrared P2 Pro, and we're going to be using that to view this VTX as it powers up. We'll first of all take a look at it on this side, we'll then let it cool down, and then take a look at it at the other, giving you an idea of its overall thermal behaviour, and this should help you make decisions on how you're going to integrate this into your quad. Okay, so it's been left cold. What we're going to do is now start the voltage regulator up. It's currently set to maximum output and it is going to connect to my goggles that are located over there and low power mode has been turned off as well. Now you can see it start to warm up. We can see that there's a hot area over there on the side of the PCB by the antenna ports, which is interesting. That's on the other side of the board. On this side though, you're seeing that heat sink heat up fairly evenly actually. There's no major hotspot showing, but what you can see is that PCB start to get very hot on that side of the board compared to the areas around it, but that really isn't showing through on the heatsink itself. What we'll do is just leave it and just show you what it gets to, and then we will flip it over and perform the same test on the other side. What's interesting is you're not seeing anywhere in the middle get very, very hot. It's the PCB that seems to be increasing in temperature with the heatsink overall doing a good job. But what you're not seeing is that bulge area specifically with the SOC is get very hot in itself. What we'll do is leave it continue to warm up and then we will swap it over to the other side. Now at this point here, I have simply rotated the VTX around. I haven't allowed it to cool at this point. I'm simply showing it to you as it is having been on for a few minutes looking at the other side of the board. You can clearly see again that we're seeing very similar behavior with the heatsink itself remaining cooler, but the board around the heatsink looking very, very hot. 
Now, just to show you some proper temperature readings on this as we're doing it, the thermal view that you saw just now wasn't pre-calibrated and there were some pretty high temperatures being shown there. However, now I've connected up a thermocouple that is on top of the VTX and we're currently showing about 26 degrees. We're going to start recording on the thermal and whilst the thermal doesn't match exactly, it's at 31, it'll give us an idea of where we're at. So what we'll do is power on let the VTX power up and then we'll start to see what kind of temperatures we're getting from this in use. You can see there where the thermal couple is. We're starting to see the temperature increase on the board. So that area there is showing 44 degrees, but the heat sink is currently showing 40 on the thermals. You can see that the thermal isn't accurate at the moment from a temperature measurement point of view, but this is also going to be slower than the thermal for reading as well. So it's not going to have the same increase in temperature over time as this will have, because this would be much, much quicker. But what we'll do now is just let this do its warm up process, and then we'll come back and take a look at what the numbers are actually like. Unfortunately, the heat has lifted the thermocouple, which is absolutely typical. It's still on at this moment in time, but it has actually lifted it. But what I'm going to do is now it's come off, I'm just going to put the thermocouple there, that area where we were seeing some very high temps, and just see what we get. The reading on the thermal is saying... 90 degrees but obviously if we take a look at what we're seeing there on the thermocouple we're getting closer to 60 so you can see there's quite a difference there in the results I'm still playing with the settings on this thermal camera with regards to things like the temperature what we can see is we're definitely getting 70 degrees on the PCB there that is the hot spot, and on the thermal, that's saying it's 115. So you can see it's a little bit out, but we're definitely getting some pretty high temps there, and we're continuing to see them increase now on the display. Now, the VTX has just entered the overheat shutdown, and you can see on that point there where I'm testing, it's got to over 90 degrees. If we just take a look at it on the heatsink area, it's very much up to that level as well. But the PCB is the area that really is very, very hot. And the VTX now has gone into shutdown. Now, just to show you that there on the thermal, you can see that the unit clearly is very, very hot. But again, you can see the heatsink in action definitely pulling that heat away from the board, but it's areas like this that it can't pull the heat away from is what is getting very, very hot. And you can see that all the way around the sides. Overall, there's no question that these VTXs get hot. It's really just a question of how much cooling you're gonna need around the edge rather than just the heat sink as well. And you're gonna need plenty of airflow around this to ensure that the board gets cooled alongside the heat sink as well. Just to show you the other side from cold, you can see I've got the thermal on and I'll put the thermal up on the screen in a minute. But you can just see it on the side there that it is pretty much cold. I've also got a probe on there too, which is showing room temperature. So what I'm going to do is hit the start button, which is going to power up the power supply. You can see we're getting some thermal reflections on the side there from the clip that goes over the antennas. But now we can start to see it kick in. You can start to see it getting warm and that temperature coming up on the other side of the board. You can see again that heat sink starting to really show a even colouring and the areas around it now getting very, very hot once again. And we can start to see that temperature increase now on our thermal probe over here. You can see we're at 23, 24 degrees. Let me just make sure that it is stuck to the top of the VTX. Yes, it is. So now you can really start to see that temperature kick in and increase. 
it's going to take a bit of time because it is completely cold but we can now start to see that heat rise taking place. Okay, now just looking back about two minutes later, we're up to 65 degrees. And if we look at the thermal, you can see very much the same picture. Again, the heatsink showing cooler than the main area around the sides. It's clear that it's the PCB that is really showing the heat and the heatsink is doing its job well. It's cooler because it is radiating that heat away from the board, but the areas where there isn't heat sink, there's no thermal transfer, and as such, that's why it's looking so hot on the thermal camera. Now it's a few minutes later, and just to show you it with that thermal probe removed, we're now just looking at the back. You can see it's much more even than it was earlier. Heat sink still being visible compared to the rest of the PCB. It's very much the situation of the PCB having the hottest area, but the heat sink is doing this job and removing that heat away from the board. Now just to flip it over and show you it from the other side at the same time, you can see again very similar overall, the heat sink showing up. You can see that there's no real difference with that lump area in the middle. It's the PCB that's very much showing the hottest overall. Next, we're going to do the same tests with this, the Walk Snail Whoop VTX. Now, this one has come with the heat spreader removed, but the thermal paste has been left in place, and that's how I'm going to test it. We'll check, first of all, both the current draw, and then we will move over to the thermal testing. So for this, we have a fully charged 1S cell that we're going to be using. We're going to be powering it with 4 point. 0 volts exactly and then we'll be taking a look at what the current draw is there. Now it is set to maximum power output which is 200 milliwatts for this VTX and the low power mode is switched off. We're just going to wait for it to kick in, it should connect to the goggles and you can now see that it's kicked in to about 950, 960 milliamp all the way up to about 1.1 amp. Okay, now just to demonstrate the thermal characteristics, I'm going to plug in carefully my 1S battery and you can now start to see the board heat up. It is clear that that main chipset in the middle is what's getting hot first of all. You can see the heat emanate from around that Interestingly, looking around the board, none of the other items seem to be getting very hot at the moment. There is that voltage regulator chip down there, which really isn't showing any thermal mass. Really, it looks like the heat is actually coming from the other side of the board at this point. Okay, it's about a minute or so later, and as you can see, the heat has spread more around the outside of the PCB, especially around the top left area. However, the center of that chip still looks cool, but remember, at this point, we do have that thermal compound on it. If I now flip to the other side of the PCB, you can see the areas that are getting hot, the power amplifier down there is clearly something that is creating quite a lot of heat. That is that small chip you can see there that is very, very red. We've then got that other chipset under that sticker at the top by the bind button. That is the front end mixer. That is also getting hot. But more than anything, it appears to be that power amplifier there that is creating the most heat. You can see the memory chip there is fairly cool and that heat now is spreading out around the rest of the PCB. Okay, now just to show you it, now I've cleaned that heat compound off the chip. We're going to plug in the power 
and then you can start to see the heat kick in around that IC. Again, it really appears to emanate from around that chip in the center, but it's going to be very hard to actually show this on the thermal because it is silicon and it's actually reflecting the thermal image. But you can see again that effect with that heat very much appearing around this side of the chip. That on the other side of the board is where we have the power amplifier. That appears to be what's driving the most heat here at the moment. Okay, so just to summarize what we've seen on the power consumption, with regards to the standard VTX, we're getting about 450 milliamp at 4S. That equates to about 7.5 watts. So if you calculate any battery usage at 8 watts, you will be about spot on. So if you're going to power it off a Beck, if you use 8 watts as your calculation, regardless of your battery voltage, you'll certainly then not have any problems. With regards to the 1S, things are quite interesting. At full 4.2 volts, we were getting about 1.1 amps, or what equates to about 4.6 watts. If you round that up to 5 watts, that'll give you an idea of the kind of consumption that you're going to have on that VTX. Obviously, it's unlikely the 1S VTX is going to be used on a Beck. You're going to be using that on direct battery voltage. And as I've shown, it clearly does draw quite a lot of power. And depending on the size of the aircraft and battery you're using, it may have have quite an effect on your flight time. Looking at the thermals, things are quite interesting as well. That large VTX does get very, very hot, but it isn't limited to just the heatsink. You can see that the PCB itself is also getting very hot in standard use as well. It's clear that the heatsink is doing a good job of removing the heat from the components it's touching, but there is clearly a lot of heat still going into the main PCB, and you're going to need to take that into account with regards to mounting it. It isn't really clear to me that one side does get a lot hotter than the other. What I would say is it wouldn't matter what way you mount it, but you do need airflow all around that VTX and around the PCB as well to ensure that it isn't going to overheat. With regards to the 1S, things are a lot more localized though. We have that PA on the back of the board getting very hot quite quickly, and then we have the main SOC getting hot as well. My advice on the 1S would actually be to mount it upside down with regards to airflow. So make sure that that PA is getting the most heat rather than the main SOC. The SOC does get hot, but it certainly doesn't appear to be the main driving factor for heat, and it's that PA that is the part that's going to cause you the most problems, and that is where I would be trying to get the most airflow. Hopefully the information I've shared with you today will give you a better idea of the best way to install the Avatar HD system to get the best possible performance from it. Now, I am really interested in hearing your thoughts and comments on this subject, so if you do have any questions, please do put them in the chat and I will try and answer them as soon as I possibly can. Again, I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. I would not have been able to make this video without their support. And if you think we've earned your support today, please do consider checking it out. There is a link to both Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee in the description of this video. Anyway, that's it from me. Please do stay safe. Please do let me know what you think in the chat and I will speak to you soon.